What's going on guys? So this video was filmed September 3rd and I'm fishing a jetty on the south shore of Long Island. I'll be throwing lures with one rod and bottom fishing with the other. I'll be using a high-low rig tipped with clam and squid. Now the puffer fish action was non-stop and as you can see they're mostly really tiny puffer fish. These young ones blow up immediately unlike some of the larger ones I've caught in the past which don't even blow up at all. This one blows up entirely as I pull it up to me. When they're fully inflated, they're rock solid, and the cool thing is they can fill themselves up with both water if they're underwater, and with air if they're out of the water. Now here I've got a pretty good sized sea robin, which gets stuck on the rocks as I try to bring it up onto the jetty. So I scale down the slippery rocks to recover the fish in my rig. Now this is the inlet side of the jetty, where the water's a lot calmer, so it's not as dangerous as if I would be doing this on the other side. This day was about 90, so I certainly didn't mind getting wet. It's a little hard to tell the size from the GoPro, but this is actually one of the larger sea robins I've caught. But certainly not what I'm after today, so back it goes. We let a puffer fish do a couple laps in a puddle before releasing it and getting onto what we really came here for. On my first cast, a bird hit my lure before it even hit the water and got hooked. Fortunately, it came off on its own before I had to handle it. Now I'm targeting some of the pelagic species that briefly come inshore here on Long Island in the late summer and early fall. I thought if I was lucky I'd have a shot at catching false albacore tuna, Atlantic bonito, or frigate tuna. But I certainly wasn't prepared for what I ended up pulling out of the water. This is a Spanish mackerel. Now their range does extend as far north as Cape Cod, but here in the northeast they're mainly offshore, rarely come inshore, and I've never even heard of one being caught from the land on Long Island. Now when I initially saw this school blowing up on bait at the surface, I thought it might be bluefish, but I quickly discovered it wasn't as none of them would hit my initial casts I threw at them. Through trial and error, I discovered that the ticket was using a size 2 deadly dick with a medium fast retrieve. And of course the puffer fish never stopped devouring the squid. The minimum size for a keeper Spanish mackerel is 14 inches. This one measures in at 20 inches and I'm assuming this is a pretty good size one. They have these crazy looking teeth on display, but they don't seem like they would have the jaw power of a bluefish. Anyway, I understand these are really good eating, so I'm going to bring it home and try it out. Now Chelsea started putting a bunker chunk on the high-low rig along with the squid, and at first I was like, what are you doing? But I stood corrected when she pulled up a fluke which had selected the bunker chunk instead of the squid strips. It just goes to show, you should never stop trying new things, because you never know what you'll discover might work. This fluke isn't a keeper, but that's okay because we were more excited to try out the Spanish. This time of year, the fluke are staging up in the inlets, getting ready for their ocean migration. As I attempted to catch more Spanish, I got this bluefish, which shows us some of them mixed in there too. I'm taking him home for dinner as well. And of course there's always time to catch and release one more puffer fish. Okay, so we have a little over a mile walk back to the car, and we'll drive home and prepare the fish. Now the first difference I noticed compared to some of our inshore fish was just how easy this thing was to fillet. It had no scales, seemingly no bones, and the flesh just cut through like butter. The physique of the fish just lended itself to a perfect fillet. The flesh had a very light color, a good texture, and was very firm. There was virtually no meat wasted on this fish. I had made sure to bleed the fish out immediately and get it on ice within a reasonable amount of time. And now we're making a simple marinade with mayo, a little bit of sriracha sauce, basil, garlic salt, pepper, and a little bit of olive oil. We lathered them in the marinade, placed them in a Ziploc bag, and put in the refrigerator for about an hour. Then we placed them in a cast iron pan and broiled them for about 10 to 15 minutes. And man, did they come out phenomenal. Alright guys, if you enjoyed, please like and subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications on future content. I'll see you next time.